Hey everybody, Tony VT RV to RV Rentals. Hey, I wanted to start this channel to help out other RV rental people um, and, and you know try to teach them some extra things that I've learned over the last couple of years. And then, you know, I was reading this book by Russell Bunsen on traffic secrets, and he says to just uh, he said to just document because I've been so afraid to make different videos because quite frankly, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and so, but what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna document my experience and what experience we have. We, you know, we have a class A RV, which is like a 38 foot Jayco sleeps 10 double bunk beds. And then we co-sign um, or consign, co-sign, consign with uh, the guy who are one of our security guards. Um, and we do his little mini Winnie 22 footer. We've been doing it for the last probably two, this is our third season. So. It's, it's been good, it's been, uh, it's, it's not quite as profitable as I thought, but that's just cause I'm the least handy Mexican ever and I have no idea how to fix anything. And I don't wanna fix anything and I have a business that I have to run besides this one. So, and then this one takes a lot of time. I, I, didn't, I didn't imagine how much time it would take to run just two RVs and to rent them out. I mean, there is always something going on, something wrong. And then on this last time, Last year, I had to get a new windshield for the RV because there was two little chips in it. And then I was going to call the safe light guy and then we did have the safe light guy over. And then and then he, he filled one and then the other renter got one little chip in it. And then it got right in the middle of the windshield. And then they just couldn't fix that chip. So I had to replace the windshield last year. When they replaced the windshield, they like damaged the gasket. So then on several rentals, I had, I had uh, one rental a couple weeks ago the windshield separated from the seam and then the customers put a rag in between the front windshield into this hole into the windshield so uh needless to say i had to i had to call the glass company who installed it they came back out and they fixed it and then i had to call the insurance again because there was more chips in it and i didn't get the chips fixed in time I don't know why that Safe Light Auto Glass makes it so easy. They have an app, you can schedule it, your insurance covers it, but sometimes you get so busy. I was like, oh, I'll do it when I have that one week buffer and not when I have the one day buffer um, because in the summer, especially in Vegas, you're hopping, that's your busy time. And there's so much other stuff breaking. You're like, oh shoot, you know, it's just a little chip in the window. Then it ruptured again this year. So then I had to get another, another windshield, which, and then I had people obviously complain that there was a crack in one of them because we ordered the windshield and then it got here. And then the guy realized, oh, it needs a new gasket. So then we had to wait for another customer to have it. And then, you know, all these little things people find to nitpick, I find, cause they wanna try to get a discount or a deal. You know, a lot of people are used to dealing with, you know, bigger companies where if anything goes wrong, they give them a credit or give them a comp or give them all that. But when you're a small business like me, like maybe you, maybe you only have one, two, five, 10 RVs, those things will kill you. I was just looking at my QuickBooks and I don't think it's done properly, but, off those two last year, we brought in probably 80, 84,000, something like that. And, but we, you know, the, and I don't think the books were done right. I think I had, I, in my, I didn't touch any of that money because I have another business that's, you know, 10 times bigger. Uh, so I don't really need the money. I'm just trying to do it as an extra avenue and then maybe build it up into, into something down the road. But initially I just wanted to try it out, see how the business worked because we do vacation rentals as it is. And we just, you know, uh, with things that go on in the world, like we just had our vacation rental business just plummeted. Well, so did the RV one, but anyways, it's back. So we're, you know, I want to do the RV thing slowly. I did have like 26,000 bucks in my checking account, but I don't know how much was that from last year. Um, so I'm, you really got to dive into the books with these things. Now I have, every time I have a cost, I get it to uh, one of my assistants and they put it in the uh, things so we can keep track of it uh, on my per rental costs we do great but the 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 problem is when you have to pay to fix stuff that that's when uh, I got my cameraman back here my six-year-old daughter she's she give me a thumbs up so <laughs> so they always help with the RVs as well so they got this is Gianna and then you want to come say hi to you? Oh, of course <laughs> and, uh, they're twins so they have to do everything together so this is their so they, <laughs> they help me with the rv so they help me do the final inspection we also so. got in the rv too <laughs> you do huh and there's like little orange spots all over we couldn't get them off i know we tried to and then it has like that vinyl flooring and it drove me crazy like we had some people 
I don't know what kind of nationality they were, but they used some kind of oil and it got over the linoleum or the vinyl or whatever, and it just will not come off. We've tried to clean it with so many different things. I've tried natural remedies with citrus and uh, baking soda and uh, vinegar. Juice. We tried lemon juice. <laughs> I had them out there with a toothbrush trying to get it out there. We could not do it. And I just got a quote, even to redo the tile floor out there was, um, 2500 bucks just for the RV and then just to change the carpet up front was like $800 so it's $3,000 which I'm gonna do I'm gonna plan on refurbishing it like every three years because I know a lot of people buy them and then they just sell them after a year two years or three years which I can see that strategy as well because these things just get beat to hell <laughs> but I think my strategy if I had to redo it is I would buy a two-year-old one I would try to buy one with less, the least amount of slides. Can I go to the, why'd you guys go? <laughs> so I tried to buy the one with the least amount of slides or no slides, because the slides are just, I mean, every single time there's almost something wrong with it. Uh, uh, so yeah, so it's a good business. I mean, uh, the rentals are there. I mean, there's plenty of rentals there, even, and but you, you got to get your costs right or else you're just doing a lot of work for nothing. I see a lot of people on the outdoorsy Facebook group and they just um, uh, they say, oh, I only charge forty dollars for delivery. Well, I charge people one hundred and fifty dollars each way for delivery, even if it's only, you know, 30, 40 miles, because you think I got to pay two guys two hours. It takes, you know, an hour to get there, an hour to get back two people if you times that by. $20 each per hour, that's $40 that way, plus $40 back, that's $80, plus maybe 20 bucks for gas, um, you know, plus they need another car for their gas, plus the gas on the RV, so I see a lot of people shortchanging themselves, and I'm sure at the end of the year, they're gonna look and say, oh, shoot, we didn't really make any money, and we, you know, our campers, you know, basically destroyed, so you really gotta cover your costs. I would, if, if people are charging, like, you know, mom and pop, just a couple who are semi-retired and they just want to make some money and they rent out the RV and they don't charge any money to clean it and they let you clean it themselves, they're just going to get the lower end clientele. So I highly recommend against that because the lower, the lower dollar amount you charge, and I was talking to my mobile mechanic about this, the lower dollar amount you charge, the, the less the clientele is or the less respectful the clientele is the more damage you get on the units, the, the higher you are in price, the better clientele you're gonna get. So I highly recommend not charging less than $130 a night at the at the fair bare minimum. <clears throat> if you're doing less than that, you're gonna get a lot of, not, not all of them obviously, but you're gonna get a higher proportion of people yeah. who are a bigger pain in the butt because every dollar means so much more to them and a lot of them try to find ways, you know, all my guests are great, obviously, but you do see a lot of trends. I'm in the vacation rental business. So many people try to get discounts, try to get, try to uh, make things out of proportion or if something's not right, you know, they try to call down complaints so they can get extra stuff. It's just kind of something in the society now or something. So it definitely watch your costs. I would charge a cleaning fee. I would charge a setup fee. I would charge any, I mean, these things are, I mean, I charge, huge cleaning fees, I charge huge setup fees, they charge, um, you know, I charge for everything because you have to or else you have to do all that work and you're not making much money. Or you pay somebody else to do it, you pay a fair amount of money and then you still gotta pay, you know, 20% to the RV share or outdoorsy website. So, you, it, you you know, even when you charge a cost, you remember 20% right off the top or if you only have one, 25% comes right off the top. So that's not money you get. And then you got you got to remember you got your business licenses, you got your corporate fees, you got all that stuff eats up. You're not really making that much profit, so make sure you're charging for everything. Okay, so that was just my quick video today, uh, my documentary on That's how the summer's minutes. going. And <laughs> how long? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Oh, that's not too long. Okay, so I just want to do a quick video. Uh, um, just kind of documenting our experience. The kids and I are live in it. We still haven't used the, the dang thing because I don't trust my family. I'll probably destroy that thing. Probably me, huh? Yeah, yeah I, break, I break most of the stuff. Yeah, I feel like a <laughs> Hey, you guys aren't too easy on things at all. No, either. But we'll go, we'll go we'll use the RV one of these days, but they'll definitely, yeah, you'll definitely be fighting in there, that's for sure. Yes, so um, my advice is charge higher fees, charge for everything. Yeah, because because you want the people that are willing to pay. Hey, girls, can you excuse me? Excuse me. Uh, find that you want to find the clients that are doing it. Make sure she's not behind me. 
Oh, she's, <laughs> uh, find the clients that are willing to pay. Um, watch out for little things becoming big things. So that, that glass windshield thing, maybe you knew that. And I, I mean, I knew it could happen. I didn't think it happened so easily, you know, when you got the windshield. And I think, I think people don't drive those things, especially the big class A's that well, or they're used to them. And then the springs flip. And then I learned if you don't have the right air pressure in the tire, um, sometimes even though it says one, like mine say 110, we had 110 in it, but the tire guy was like, actually, if you ride 115, it, it actually makes it ride better. So, uh, you know, it's learning these little things. Hopefully I can share that with you guys. I don't really have anything to sell you. I just kind of wanted to help out, you know, the other people doing it. And uh, <laughs> uh, just want to help out anybody we can and uh, hopefully we can all learn from each other but you know please hit the subscribe button please hit the like button if you like the video you want more or put in the comments section you know if there's any other topics you want me to go over of what we learn and then the girls and i will continue to make videos telling you about the rv experience but try to make it as hotel like as possible um try to include soaps candies uh welcome package make sure you have a very strong contract because that contract saved my bacon a bunch of times and then and then and then watch the renters these last ones they called us and they were they were all upset they said uh hey girls okay go, okay go sit down uh what's up what oh yeah we have our own cookie with the twins channel me and it was selling we have our own cookie with the twins channel if you want to watch it please subscribe to our youtube channel oh yeah they have their own youtube channel cooking with the twins for gluten-free cooking and healthy living for kids. So please subscribe to that if they want, uh, if you want to keep your kids healthy. And they do different stuff on there, like teach kids how to eat healthy and eat good, eat any kind of food they want, but make it organic and natural and healthy and uh, good. So, uh, so yeah, so yeah, do that. Get a good contract, make sure you have a contract and then watch these people. Oh, the last one I was talking about, um, they, they said they had to call the mobile mechanic because the showers backed up, both showers. And I was like, how could both showers back up? And they said it was because there was hair in the trap. And then they just took a picture like of the dirt in the dirty water in the bottom. And then, and then they just submitted a picture of a text receipt from the place, but not an itemized receipt. So I wanted to call and see what had happened. So we knew what we needed to fix or whatever. Um, so I actually called the mobile mechanic and here they all went to the beach and they all took showers in the RV, in both showers. And they took, they had five kids with them, four adults, and they all took showers and it used up all the water in into the gray tanks, but they never hooked the hoses up, the black tank hose and the gray tank hose. And the first thing I asked them when they had the problem was, are the hoses hooked up? And they said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I called the mobile mechanic and they, he got there. When he said when he got there, there was no hoses hooked up or whatever. So people will try to lie to you. If people will try to get stuff for free, that's the biggest thing you're gonna need to watch out for in this business is, is coming up with something you can do. Because if you have to refund people every time something goes wrong in an RV, you will not make any money. It'll be a miserable experience. I tell you this. I charge them, you charge them for everything. Maybe you get a bad review here and there, but most people see through those bad reviews and you can also usually do a little rebuttal to them, but do not be held mercy by bad reviews. People try to pull that on me all the time and, and I'm just not falling for it. If you break it, you break it. It's it's part of the thing. I've, we've made it as simple as possible. We send them a video of how to drive the RV. We send them a video of every single button in the RV. We send them paperwork of every single button in the TV. And now we're even making a guidebook that's a printed out version of everything as well. In addition to the video, in addition to the paperwork, which has all that. So I've tried to make it so, you know, it, it, it's almost as dummy proof as possible and you should too, or else you're going to have a lot of people calling about, you know, this and that. And because those RVs take forever to use, especially the big ones. All right. Those are the tips for the day. God bless you guys. Take care. Thanks for hanging out with us and we'll talk to you soon.